I'm excited to share this with you today. It's a very interesting subject, and it's it's something that uh, that the mid market is is starting to awaken to with all the technology we have today, and with the uh, way that you can harness that technology. I also, before we get started, just want to thank partners uh, Devin at Scanco, the leader in warehouse automation technology, Caroline, who's on the call with VTech showcasing Starship, Sage's premier multi-carrier shipping software, and finally Dane at SPS Commerce, the market-leading EDI solution. Uh, SPS delivers the ultimate value in business process improvement and analytics to their Sage customers. Uh, by now, most have some idea of what big data is all about, but few have mastered the understanding of what can be created with big data, how to apply it, and how to turn that data into opportunities for higher profit and revenue. And the definition, the very definition of big data, still seems to be a moving target. When you ask a tech professional what big data is, different experts will give you different answers. That is because the term big data is contextual. The term is also often misused as many software firms today attempt to hitch their wagons to its allure. Indeed, big data means different things to different people. If we're talking about search engine optimization, big data is all about people's browsing habits and how much time they spend on websites and so forth. By obtaining statistics on people's habits, the opportunity to improve your messaging and target marketing can exponentially increase. So today, I'm going to talk a little bit about big data and how it can benefit your organization in a less obvious yet highly potent emerging discipline. We're here to discuss modern scientific price optimization techniques and how it can have a massive effect on growth and profit. Promoter is a big data analytical software program designed specifically for price optimization. <clears throat> Excuse me. Similarly, those who use SPS Commerce reporting products experience a form of big data intelligence, improving collaboration with vendors and order fill rates. When big data analytics are employed in a price-specific context, the opportunity to drive profits <coughs> increases exponentially. Excuse me. <coughs> OK. Um, so yeah, big data can increase, increase profits exponentially, but how is that, how does that play in? That is because when it comes to product pricing and its effect, your internal record data is entirely and indisputably factual. Basing your analytics on internal factors, such as sales orders, purchase orders, and inventory product record data is very important if you want to obtain an accurate vision of how consumers value your products. External factors such as competition and market data certainly have their place in the scheme of things, and these are very important. But competitors are never going to give up their trove of historical data to you. All you have to go by is a competing price. Understanding how competitors set their prices is largely guesswork. The truth is, you have no idea how competitors arrive at their selling prices. But with big data analytics aimed squarely at price, you do know how you arrived at your prices, and you also know how consumers have reacted to those prices. That's a very important distinction. In summary, your internal information is confidently rooted in facts about your product line. The product data in your system right now can have a huge impact on profit, revenue, customer loyalty, and operations. How is this information used to great effect? Data, uh, through price optimization, 
you can gain visibility and insight into how customers value your products. You can study customer behavior through this historical analysis. Looking at the internal numbers reveals incredible value opportunities. In turn, that value can be translated into price alignment that truly reflects how your customers view the value of your offerings. But how is that possible? This is not a random test or sampling. This is not a solution that magically raises your prices or lowers them. This is pricing science. So now I want to get into another, there's a slide coming up here that talks a little bit about the harm of bad pricing. And before, before analytical programs existed, everybody did cost plus and competitor matching. And unfortunately, neither of those, those ideas reflect the true value of the products and how the customers view the value. So often, organizations leave a lot of money on the table. Uh, but when products are priced too high, customers respond by not buying as much. So um, by having the analytical model, you can actually dial that in. So I'm going to get to this next slide here. Um, the harm of bad pricing is often invisible and undetectable in organizations. Poor purchasing practices, on the other hand, can very easily show up in inflated inventory levels and stockouts. Bad pricing that leads to plummeting profits, on the other hand, is invisible, often until it's too late. Promoter our solution acts to mitigate and eliminate poor pricing practices. But what is the business case and just what happens when price data points are ignored? And what are data points? What is a price data point? Well, data points such as, such as product movement, product trending, and life cycle are business process issues that drive value. And, and by the way, by life cycle, I mean where is the product in its life? Did it start off three or four years ago and it's been steadily declining? And it goes up a little during the season and then it goes down a little, but each year it, it seems to you know, go down or go up or, or stay the same. That's the life cycle of the product. Those are all business process issues that drive value. Um, these data points can have a tremendous influence on the prices of the products that are sold. And we call them value drivers. The philosophy of pricing and revenue optimization is to make money by many small adjustments leading to big profits. This is how we monetize our offerings through promoter value drivers. In this example, our current product selling price is $89.99. Promoter data analytics indicate that this item's movement value has $2.50 and move up elasticity. This product apparently is a fast mover. Another value driver has been included in this example, trend. According to the trend analytic, this product has been on a moderate downward spiral even though it's currently residing in a high movement group. So it's very interesting here. If you think about it, a product can be a number one mover as aggregated, uh, but it can also be fading. It may be at the beginning of the period. It started off at the top, and at the end of the period being analyzed, it, it's at the bottom of number one and in jeopardy of being number two. So, so you know, these are two different analytics that are close cousins but they're very different and they have ramifications um, that reflect the true value of the price of the product. So um, a negative trend value has been assigned by the analytic in this case to mitigate the potential downward movement spiral. Um, in this example, it would be, it has been further discovered through analytics that the current days on hand of this product is too limited. The days on hand, or DOH analytic, adds value to the product by 50 cents due to the fact that, according to the analytic, it's going to run out sooner than later. Now, just as an aside, 
if you had a product that was going to be in stock for the next six years, this would be a negative value. It would be trying to take money off of it because it wants you to turn that into cash. <laughs> so finally, um, by addressing this data point through price, the increase will assist in improving profit margin and a potential improved days on hand ratio for this particular product going forward. Now, we have a promoter, what we call version 4, that offers a psychological competitor profiling matrix. I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> which has confirmed that the marketplace averages are actually lower. This, of course, influences the price downward by a dollar and fifty cents. So even though, even though we have no idea how competitors set their prices, the fact that they're out there are still influential. So, so we must take competitor pricing into consideration. It's still very important. And I would surmise that sometimes it's more important and sometimes it's less important than some of these other value drivers that are offered. And Promoter offers a way to um, to dial each of them up and down depending on you know what you're trying to do in your pricing routine. So um, another important driver would be supplier. We must consider the the performance of our suppliers to to, to obtain a complete picture. In this case, our supply is somewhat slower on this, this particular product than other products. And since it is harder to obtain, that does make it more valuable. Finally, once the SKU price has gone through the gauntlet of big data analytics, which is what we're looking at here, we arrive at, often arrive at a slightly higher value or price. But we're not done yet. In pricing science, there is another aspect, rounding is a very important and it's a very profitable endeavor. We apply an automated promoter rounding scheme and the price moves to $91.99. This is an example of what big data analytics can do for you in the pursuit of the optimal price. And this is really this really encapsulates what this this webinar is all about, what this, this portion of it is all about is understanding value drivers or conversely understanding the issues or the items that go on within a business and in the marketplace that really do influence the quality of a price point as opposed to just simply doing cost plus or looking at your competition and matching your competition and you know again I'm not I'm not reading this from a piece of paper I'm I'm thinking in my mind that the audience would love to know that um, when you match a competitor's price, you have to justify that. Price is a language. Price is psychological. When you lower your price under a competitor, you have to justify that too. You, you, what you're saying is, my product is cheaper somehow, and the consumer doesn't know why. So they're left to guess and scratch their head, why is it cheaper? Is the product quality cheaper? A lot of people may think that. Is it possible that for some reason the, the, the uh, service is cheaper? People may think that too. If you're in the ballpark and your product price is a little bit higher by a dollar or two, people might very well perceive that your product quality is better or somehow or other there's something about your service that's going to be superior. So, you know, the, the first, everybody in their mind thinks, you know, I need to be the, 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 the low price leader. Well, guess what? You're also going to be the low profit leader. And, and in many cases, there's just no reason for it. You, you really, if you price to value, which means pricing to the analytics, you come much closer to the way that your customers perceive the value of your products. Now, moving on to the next slide. The philosophy of pricing and revenue optimization is to make money by many small adjustments. It's not about finding the great pricing move that's going to stagger the competition in a single blow. Our solution promoter enable, enables the search for small and transient puddles of profit as they appear in the big data framework without analytics looking at multiple data points or, or what we call value drivers companies routinely risk 
missing out on extraordinary profit and revenue opportunities. It's about tying true value to every transaction, every product, resulting in higher profits and higher revenues. Each driver delivers a cause and effect influence on revenue, operations, and profitability. Through Promoter, our big data analytical interface, you can simplify the process of looking at every product, improving profit margins, and increasing revenues in the process. Let's discuss for a minute product branding. Price and cost are inseparable. Like cost, price, and brand are inseparable, and I'm sure many Sage users in this audience today have spent a lot of equity and a lot of sweat and a lot of marketing dollars on brand. You have a brand. Your brand is very valuable. If you want to maximize profit and revenue, you must understand that branding is a form of communication between company and customer. Non-analytical companies routinely discount their brand, and they leave lots of money on the table. They really do, year in, year out. Branding is at its most valuable as a tool for pricing. However, it is also the most difficult metric to quantify. The goal is to implement and integrate the most important business operational considerations into the price of every product SKU. There are ways to quantify most metrics through software-based analytics. Ask yourself this question. What are you trying to accomplish with product prices? What are you attempting to gain? What are you doing? Are you attempting to gain additional sales volume? Are you trying to move up the price to improve profit margins? Well, these, these two issues are contradictory when pricing one or two products at a time. But what if you could price thousands of products at once and, and execute pricing for profit and revenue and volume at the same time? Well, there is a way. There is a way to do that. There are many data points in play in the process of setting an optimized price. And if you're, not optim if you're not employing multiple data points, you're not optimizing prices. Companies routinely discount the true value of their offerings without price optimization. Im imagine being able to constantly stay on top of the many data points all the time. That is what big data solutions do for price optimization. It is highly difficult, if not near impossible, to execute with consideration to every data point and strategy without robust price optimization software. So we're just about to the end of this portion of the webinar. And in closing, uh, we have one slide left here, I think. Yes, we do. Big data analytics time has, has come. Coupled with price optimization, it will result in smarter pricing decisions and, in turn, better profits and revenues in the pursuit of pricing excellence. Um, please be sure to contact us for more information or set up a demo on how you can retain more profits and thrive through price optimization. And I want to thank everybody for your time. I know it's valuable. And I would like to hand the controls over to Dane at SPS for the next segment, segment of today's webinar. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dave. So uh, this portion of the webinar, what we're going to do is uh, build on what Dave was talking about, uh, talking about items, and obviously he was talking about price optimization. What we're going to do is take you through uh, what it looks like to take that inventory that sits within uh, Sage and sell it. Uh, we have an opportunity. What we're going to walk through is uh, diff three different solutions that uh, take that take integrating your supply chain to another level. Uh, we're talking about Sage 100, and what we're going to do today is talk through three different companies. Uh, the SPS Commerce piece, uh, which we are an uh, EDI company, which works with big box retailers that helps get EDI orders in from those big box retailers uh, through into Sage 100. We're going to talk to Devin Ambron at Scanco. He's going to show us 
how his scanning solution will allow uh, the data to be automatically uh, scanned barcodes and automatically get put onto EDI documents like advanced ship notices. And we're also going to hear from Caroline Walsh, who's going to uh, walk us through her Starship product, which helps with uh, sending the information necessary for shipping. So uh, rate shopping and the different vehicles that are used to uh, get the physical goods out to the customers who have ordered the goods. So what I'm going to do first is walk you through a, uh, a quick little uh, process flow to help you understand visually what you're going to be seeing. And then I'll next hand it over to Devin so he can show you what happens once the order is in the Sage system and how a scanning solution works. She'll, he'll then send it over to Caroline where she'll show you the Starship solution and then it'll all tie together. So looking at this process flow, what you're seeing on the left-hand side here is a list of uh, retailers that uh, suppliers would be working with. SPS works with over 1,500 retailers and uh, about 50,000 different suppliers. So what will happen is the data is going to come in over EDI through the SPS Commerce Network. And SPS Commerce then is going to send it over into the sales order module within Sage 100. The sales orders will be created. That's when uh, Devin's going to pick up the, uh, the orders that are going to be scanned and picked and packed. He's going to pick and pack the inventory items that go on each one of the orders. Uh, scanning barcodes and making sure that the inventory items that are on those orders to be picked are actually picked and, and boxed. Then he'll hand it off to Caroline where she's going to go through her piece and uh, talk about Starship and, and uh, shipping. The goods then are shipped out to the, to the trading partners uh, via truck and then the, once the goods come back or the, uh, the order comes in from Starship, it'll go back out to SPS Commerce, where SPS Commerce is going to look at the data, make sure it conforms to EDI standards, and then send it back out to the uh, individual trading partners. Now, the nice thing about this is, in some cases, some of you may be using uh, ScanCo or SPS or V Technology Starship. Uh, there is a We've worked together for so long, we have the ability to integrate those solutions together and make it one seamless solution so that you can do a lot of this in an automated fashion uh, instead of doing some of the manual entry that might be required for uh, the individual task that's necessary. So Devin, I'm going to hand it over to you. All right, Dane, thank you so much. And uh, I, think, I think you did a great job at explaining exactly how our solutions were meant to work together. And a few of the things I want to uh, just go over real quick, because I know um, we're going to kind of go through a high level and uh, just go through some transactions here, just enough to get you interested in our solutions and um, have the ability to reach out to us for a more comprehensive webinar. As you'll see, each of our solutions have the ability to do much more than you're going to have availability to see on the demonstration today. But something that's really exciting for ScanCo in 2014 is the uh, ability to access our software via a suite of a lot of new hardware options um, that makes it a lot more easy for people at an entry level to get involved when um, some of these uh, Intermec devices may have been around $2,500 for uh, entry point. We also have smartphones as well as um, iPods and iPhones and scan sleds um, dramatically reducing the cost that it takes to enter in. And um, so what I'm going to do is I have uh, some transactions here that I'm going to run through and I have a iPhone in a linear scan sled that's uh, pictured here. Uh, so this is what the device actually looks like. And I have some barcodes here of some items that I've uh, corresponded with with Starship. And here I have our uh, demo mass server Sage 100 and you can see the um, sales order that I have here. And so uh, right here is an actual live uh, feed of the software right here on the computer and you can see what we've done is we've designed the software to be very intuitive and with being able to have everything on a touch screen there's uh, so much more flexibility to be able to um, just click on what you see is what you get. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, we, of course, have other things, item inquiry, receiving, receipt of goods entry, um, inventory, transfers, alias, physical count, um, and wave directed picking part of our advanced suite. But we're going to be going into the shipping module now and select shipping data entry. And so anytime you're working with Scanco Warehouse, there's a number of different ways to enter information. One of those is the on-screen keyboard or the native keyboard for the device, and you'll see that that's visible below. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, the lookup feature we have, which is going to live validate any of the options that are available for any of the screens. And so here it allows us to choose which shipper ID we have, which we'll select. Now when we select the lookup option when we're at the sales order number, the great thing here is that you're going to see all the sales orders that are currently in Sage 100. And so we have uh, the sales order here, uh, 000217. All of these can be ordered by ship date, line count, customer. Each of these fields can be changed so that they can all be uh, sent between. So what I'm going to do is um, use the barcode scanning feature to go ahead and scan in that order number. And you'll see here that it's going to prompt me for a box. So for the first box, I'm going to take the first item number here and scan it in. And the Scanco Warehouse interface is designed with what we call a waterfall effect. As you saw, when I went through the shipper ID, the sales order number and the box number, the item, everything shows as it's needed. So all of the information, it does not appear at once. It shows up as you need it. So you'll see there under the item number, you'll see a short description, the warehouse, unit of measure, the bin, and the quantity shipped versus the quantity ordered. So what I'm going to do for this first box is go ahead and receive quantity of one. I'm going to hit enter. Now it's going to prompt me for the next item, which I'm going to scan in. Again, we have that nice waterfall effect. And see, this is a lotted item. So I'm going to do a lookup to find which lot. Select January 10, hit OK. That's going to automatically enter it into the system. And now we're going to see our prompt for the quantity, which we're going to select one and hit enter. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling the next box. So now you'll see uh, by the sales order number, the box number is number uh, has two there. And then we're going to go ahead and scan in the item number. Again, receive quantity of one. And you'll see this process is very quick. I'm just going through this a little bit faster now so you can see when this stuff is being done on the warehouse floor, um, everything goes along very nicely with the barcode scanner here. Click one. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my third box and I'm going to fill my last item and select quantity of one. Now what's going to happen is once this order is fulfilled and sent to the server, then we're going to have the ability to be able to send this into Sage 100 and then Starship's going to be able to handle um, the shipments from there. And you'll see here when I try to click look up, it tells us that there's no unresolved items left in the sales order. So at this point, I would click send. This is going to send the data to the server and complete the order. And I'm going to hand the screen over to Caroline so that she can finish up. Cool. Thanks, Devin. Um, this is Caroline from V Technologies. I'm just going to show you the process of um, taking that shipment that Devin just um, packed up and actually getting it shipped out with all the carrier labels, all that good stuff. So um, this is the Starship ship screen that you're looking at now. Um, I have an enhancement loaded on this Starship application here that allows me to scan the order number that's on the pick sheet to pull that invoice that was actually created from the Scanco solution. So if I um, scan that order number in, I could also type it in. I could um, browse for it. It's going to pull in all the information um, from your Sage database and bring it up on screen. And this left-hand pane over here is going to be an overview of the shipment header level information, so the uh, transportation type, the carrier and service that was translated from, the invoice billing can be translated, um, sender, and then the recipient. 
If you just um, take a look at the bottom of the screen, I'm just going to expand this information here to show you um, the detail of the boxes that were on the invoice. So this is the exact same um, you know, information that Devin just scanned in. So for the first two boxes had the two items each, and that last box had the, had the other item. If I drill into my item information here, you'll see a combination of information that's coming in from your Sage inventory, as well as um, information that Starship is um, holding in its database to give you a complete picture of the shipment. Um, you have some options as far as uh, the additional shipping information that you're going to need to process shipments. So in this case, um, it's an LTL shipment, and it's also going to Canada. So it's a combination of LTL and international. Um, and in those instances, you'll need the class for LTL, as well as the Schedule B code and other international information that's very specific to shipping that may not be stored in your SAGE data. So you can either pull information. We give you a nice utility to customize the inter interface without requiring custom development work. Or you can just simply have Starship store this information and fold it in as you go. I can do a rate shop from here and take a look to see which carriers could be available to process the shipment outside of what was translated from the ship via. Starship also has what we call ship via scenarios where you can define how and when you'd like um, the carrier and service to be automatically selected. So if you wanted to have Starship automatically select uh, the cheapest method, um, getting it there by a certain date, then um, you can do that, and Starship can select it uh, so that your shipper really doesn't have to do much to um, select the carrier service. I'm just going to stick with my Conway LTL here, and I'm going to process the shipment. To process the shipment, you can either hit the F5 or you know, do the shipment process this way. And then Starship will generate the barcoded shipping labels and also update the SAGE document so that the EDI system can retrieve that and create the ASN. This is just a preview. Um, this happens to be an LTL shipment, so I have um, some of these pallet or package level labels. Um, Starship also supports pallet level labels. And then this is um, an example of the international document that it, Starship is going to generate. So again, Starship is going to be able to take your shipment level, um, header level information, and typically that is in the top section of your document. And then the item information is used in the body of the document. The packing list can get generated by Starship, or you can continue um, you know, printing that through Sage. Certificate of Origin, just another international document. Um, Starship does support printing both the NAFTA as well as the standard CO. The commercial invoice and the VOL. This happens to be a straight VOL. Starship also supports printing the VIX. And then they're ready to process the next shipment. Um, just a note on those documents, typically they're not being you know, brought up on screen like that. I just wanted to be able to show those to you. Usually you'll just have them printed directly to the laser or the thermal printers out in the shipping area. So just a few things I wanted to show you um, since I have your attention here. Um, a couple extra um, features that you get with Starship. Um, you do have the ability to um, allow your front office access to shipment data without requiring them to be in the shipping client, per se. So um, we do have what we call the dashboard. Basically just gives you insight into Starship's database um, where you can grab um, key indicators, um, drill into those, and then eventually into the shipment itself to see the details of the shipment. You can run reports from here. Um, you can search and do lookups from here. Um, so there is some information that is going back into um, your SAGE system, but this also gives you a little more uh, detailed view of all the specifics of a shipment. 
And then the other um, thing I wanted to mention here uh, is the email notification. So for um, any shipment that goes out, whether it be LTL or small parcel, um, Starship can generate the email as a result of the shipment. The email can go out in real time as you ship. And with the integration to the ScanCo solution, you can now provide your customers with a detailed view of the items that were in each of the boxes as well as um, information about the shipment itself, like the, in this case, the PRO number. Um, the PO number might be important to your customer as um, a reference point to um, determine you know, that side of their, their order. And then before I send it back over to Dane, I just want to show you um, what gets updated on the SAGE side. So. Um, there's a couple places you can go to view that information. I'm just going to go into shipping data entry and bring 217 back up for us. And we'll go into shipping. Um, the freight amount, Starship can update the freight amount automatically for you as a result of the shipment. The freight can include what we call customizable freight rules. Um, those allow you to define how and when the freight is updated. So if you would like to add conditions, um, and you want to base those conditions on SAGE fields like uh, customer type or order total, you can do that and define different percentages. Um, we also, on the small parcel side, will get both the your negotiated rate as well as the list rate. So you can determine which rate you would like to start with and then run the calculation from there. Uh, and then the other thing that Starship is going to update is the tracking information. Um, and because the summary package tracking table is really a um, package level table, so you'll see there's the three packages that Devin had entered through the ScanCo solution. Um, and in this case, the, the shipment type was LTL. So really in an LTL shipment, the packages won't have their own tracking numbers. They'll just have one shipment level number, the PRO number here. Um, so we update the PRO number on each of the packages for you. If this were a small parcel shipment going maybe UPS or FedEx, they would obviously have their individual tracking numbers for each of these individual packages. Okay, that completes the shipping side of things. I'm just going to hand it back over to Dane. Thanks, Caroline. Um, so what I thought I'd do is just to kind of summarize, we'll walk you through the visual uh, workflow one more time and talk again about the, the pieces that each of us had. Uh, again, on the left side, this is the, uh, uh, the trading partners that are going to set EDI data. Uh, the EDI data is going to come in uh, as a purchase order into the uh, SAGE 100 system through SPS Commerce. Sales order gets created. Uh, there's a variety of rules that can be used to create those orders, whether it be uh, information on ship to codes or uh, item cross-referencing or a variety of other uh, things that are necessary to get the order into, into the SAGE 100 system to look and feel the way it's necessary for uh, you as the uh, user of the SAGE 100 system to, to use it and, and get it shipped and picked and packed properly. Uh, once it's in the system, uh, Devin showed you how he had the ability to pick and pack boxes uh, from a handheld on the uh, iOS device, uh, and he scanned in those uh, shipper IDs and scanned in the uh, individual barcodes to get those items in boxes, and then handed it off to Caroline, where she was uh, choosing carriers and, and rate shopping, showing the different shipping options that were uh, available to the user so that they can get the goods shipped out in the most economical, fastest, or uh, the, the way that's necessary in order to get the goods out. Uh, she showed you the, the international option and as well as the uh, web options for the, uh, the, the information that comes back to you as the user so that you can uh, give the appropriate information that's necessary about shipping to those people that you've shipped those goods to. And then after she gets the data, it then goes after the data has been, or the goods have been picked, packed, and shipped, uh, Scanco and Starship share that data uh, so that the advanced ship notice, which is a document, an EDI document, can be created and sent 
through the SPS Commerce Network out to the individual trading partners, along with any of the other necessary documents like invoicing or purchase order acknowledgments or whatever the case may be that's necessary for that trading partner uh, to get the appropriate data that, that's necessary because they're the ones dictating to their suppliers what the EDI data needs to look like, feel like, and, and have the appropriate information. So that was the supply chain side of the integrated uh, uh, information. And also, we, you heard from Dave Leonard earlier about big data and pricing optimization. And we want to, all four of us want to thank you for your time. And uh, I think, Adrian, you're going to open it up to some questions now, correct? Thank you so much, Dane and company. It was a great presentation. It really shows how a streamlined supply chain optimization solution works for Sage 100 ERP and how price optimization can allow you to work more streamlined and uh, get the most out of your product pricing. So thank you. Great job, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and launch some, some polls with the audience. If the audience could just take a moment to answer these polls, that would be great. And then uh, I will open it up for questions. Are you interested in learning more about shipping automation? That would be that component that Caroline spoke about uh, in regard to uh, shipping the products. So if you could take a second just to answer this question. And I'm not seeing any questions so far. So let me see if there's any hands raised here. If the audience has any questions, I just encourage you to click on that question mark button next to your name on the webinar pane and go ahead and key in your question and I will read it live. Or if you feel uh, like speaking live, go ahead and click on that button with the hand on it. And that'll allow me to unmute your line and we can have live collaboration. So it looks like 90% of you are interested in learning more about uh, Caroline's solution, Starship, for shipping automation. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. I'm going to launch another poll here. Are you interested in learning more about receiving pick, pack, and ship software? If you could take a moment to answer that. <clears throat> and excuse me. Oh, we have some questions here. Let me pull them up. How do you gain access to the Starship dashboard? Thank you, Kyle. Hey, Kyle, it's Caroline. Um, there's actually a small executable that we have, so um, you could run that. It basically just puts um, a shortcut on your desktop that points back to the Starship server for you. Um, but once you, you know, click on that, you're pretty much just going through the browser um, to, to access the Starship data that way. And we have another poll up there. If the audience could take a, a moment just to answer this poll, that would be terrific. We have another question here. Let me pull up the questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kyle. Kyle says, very good presenters. Thank you. And then we have a question from Alan. Will there be a recap of this presentation? I missed some of it. Alan, yes. I'm going to go ahead and send a, uh, an email follow-up with both the recording of the webinar and all the contact information of the presenters. So you'll have that in your email box by the end of the day. Um, thank you for that question. And Douglas, is there any way to connect SPS to Sage 100 other than MathAdoc? Thank you for that question. 
Yeah, Douglas, we can uh, talk about that. Um, there are some options, so um, if you want to get in contact with me, uh, with Adrian setting out the information, we can talk through that, sure. And we have another question. How do you access the executable dashboard for Starship? What is the name of the file, and where is it located, Caroline? Thank you, Linda. <laughs> hey, Linda. Um, actually, it's usually um, sent out with your license information as um, a link with some additional resources. Um, so I can take a look at your account or if it's customer or the customer's account. Um, so maybe you can just shoot me over an email and I will make sure that gets over to you. And we have one last question here. Are you interested in learning more about electronic data interchange or EDI for short? And I'm looking. We don't have any other questions so far. And I, I do want to throw in there, um, all of the folks on the line today will be at Sage Summit. And um, we're actually going to be exhibiting. V Technologies will be exhibiting. Scanco is, um, Scanco, you are, Devin, you guys are, uh, what, gold sponsors of Sage Summit? Yes, we are. Sorry, I didn't realize I had control. Yes, we're gold sponsors, and uh, we're booth 1214, so come check us out. Perfect. You guys are all over Sage Summit. So I uh, did want to get a show of hands. If you are going to Sage Summit in the audience, could you please just raise your hand? I'd like just to kind of take a quick poll and see, uh, see how many folks with us today are going to Sage Summit. Patty, thank you. Looking forward to seeing you there. Anyone else out there going to Sage Summit? Okay, might not have made your plans yet. Um, and then we do have a question. What is Caroline's email? Did that come from Linda? Yes. Oh, Linda, I'm in the process of shooting you over an email right now, so you'll be getting that shortly. <laughs> Perfect. And for everyone else that might also um, want to know what Caroline's email is, it's cwalsh at vtechnologies.com, and that will also be included in my follow-up email, well, along with everybody else. So, you know, with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, allow everyone else, all the presenters or the panelists, to say goodbye. So, um, Dave, I'm going to go ahead and unmute your line here so that you can uh, close yeah. any comments. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much uh, to everyone for joining this uh, webinar today and uh, appreciate your time. And uh, again, I appreciate uh, our partners in this, in this webinar. And uh, that's it. I'll hand it over to Dane. Thanks, Dave. And I share the, the same sentiment. Thanks for the time. And we all know that your time is valuable. So thank you for uh, giving us 51 minutes of your time. Thanks. And uh, thank you, Caroline. Thanks, thank you for the rest of the, the presenters. We're going to go ahead and uh, wish everyone a great day. Uh, oh, looks like, nope, it looks like everybody, uh, Caroline, did you have anything else that you'd like to close with? No, I'm good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. All right, everybody, you take care. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.